Hey everyone, I'm Keychain. Today we're going to talk about troop skills. Everything I know so far, how to maximize your badges, my personal strategy, all of those things. Um, talk about why it matters so much, why it's so important. Um, there's not a lot of information out there on this yet. Um, hopefully I can fill you in, uh, and I don't know everything yet. Um, so this video may become outdated, but we're going to do the best we can. Now before I get started, in the description, we've got links for the UK, the US, and France for 25% off the 10K pack of Amazon coins. Um, it'll save you about $25. Fantastic deal, one time per customer. So if you've already used it, um, you know, can't do anything for you there. But if you haven't used it yet, um, check out the Amazon App Store. It'll save you money. Uh, even if you're just a light spender, it's going to save you money over time. Okay, so let's get into troop skills. Um, first, how do you unlock them? We well, have to be castle level 30, and when you do unlock them inside of your academy, right here, um, there's this troop skills button. And when you click that, it brings you into this troop skills pane. Um, and you've got all these different badges for infantry, distance, and cavalry. Uh, and it's a little overwhelming when you first get in here. Now we're going to back out of this. I'll get back into here in a second, but I want to show the spots you can unlock them. First and foremost, the spot that you can unlock these badges is in your daily quests. And I don't remember which tiers they are. So you get five here, another five there, another five there, and another five at the end. So you get about 20 chests per day. Now the other spot that we just found or that they just released that you can get these is inside of Kingdom Raid. So gold event, Kingdom Raid. For day one, you can unlock 24 chests for unlocking the bottom tier. Another 24 for day two, bottom tier. This one is the second tier for killing threats um, on day three. Another 24. Another 24 for the training stage. And then finally another 24 for the raid stage. So that is a lot of chests. I think it comes out to 120, which is pretty significant. Um, so there are going to be a lot of these chests, and you're going to have to do math and kind of balance your own badges to figure out how you want to do stuff. Um, when you use your badge chests, you have to create them. So we're going to scroll down here. We're going to find these chests, show you how to actually get the badges. So right now I've got 95 of these. So when you hit use, you click this plus right here, you click this, and when you do that, it brings you to a choice. You get to choose infantry, distance, or cavalry. So for this, I'm gonna choose cavalry. Now the other thing I'm gonna do, if I hit create right here, it just makes one badge. I don't wanna sit here and do that 97 times. I'm gonna hit the quick create or creation button, and then I'm gonna choose 35 of these. Uh, so now, when I create that, it's going to create all 35 of the same type metal, which is what I want. So, boom, there it is. So I'm going to hit create again, and then I can click this to change the metal. So I'm going to change it to distance. I'm going to hit quick create, and I'm going to create 30 of these. Now, why am I making all three types? We will get to that in just a second. And I'm going to show you some math and why I'm doing things the way I am. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to do it my way. I'm just showing you the way I like to play. I like to maximize everything. I like to maximize every advantage. Uh, the way I'm doing mine won't make sense for everybody because not everybody plays the same way I do. So now I've got my badges. I've got 60, 61, and 75. Okay, let me get a sip of water real quick. All right, so going into the actual troop skills tab. There's different tiers. Um, so for infantry, you've got tier 10, tier 11, tier 12, and tier 13 troops. Tier 13 are the ones over here. I don't have them unlocked, so I can't do anything with them. I do have the rest of these unlocked. Now, one of the things I want to show you is look at the initial cost. Tier 10 troops, only one badge to upgrade a skill. And two for that one and two for that one. So one for these top two. 
Tier 11 cost two badges, two there and four there, so it doubled. And then Tier 12s are four, four, eight, and eight, so it doubled again. Now I can't see Tier 13, but I'm going to assume that it doubles again and that it goes, you know, eight, eight, and 16 for the bottom two skills. Now I wanted you to pay attention to the cost of all these because it's important. When you upgrade a skill, the badge cost increases by one across everything in that same tier. And let me show you what I mean. When I'm going to upgrade this one, you just saw the costs, right? I'm going to upgrade this by using one badge. Now the cost is two for this ability. The cost is also two for this ability. And now the cost is three for this ability. And when we go to the tier 11s, you can see the cost is three, three, five, and five. And same for up here. Now it's five and five and nine and nine. So every skill went up by one badge. If we do that again, we if we use another upgrade, it goes up by one badge. Every single skill went up by one badge. It's very important. Um, the other important thing about this, the reason I'm taking a balanced approach, so let me show you something. That was just infantry. When I click back into distance, distance is still one badge. So it's one, one, two, two, all the way across to the final one, which is, you know, four, four, eight, and eight. So even though I used infantry upgrades and I spent badges, distance remains unchanged. Same thing with cavalry. So because of that, because of that reason, I'm taking the balanced approach. Every single day, I'm doing a couple upgrades on infantry, a couple upgrades on distance, and a couple upgrades on cavalry. Now, why? Like people are like, oh, I, you know, maybe you don't want to do infantry at all. Uh, and that might make sense for your castle. I like to go out and fight during UAC and Kingdom Raid and all these other things. And sometimes I get hit. When my castle gets hit, it's important for me to have all of these abilities unlocked at least. And it doesn't matter which ones I max out because every upgrade I do is going to help my castle on defense. Now, of course, I'm going to put most of my main focus into Tier 12 because that matters um, for my attacks. But I do want to spread this out a little bit so that my tier 10s are a little bit stronger, my tier 11s are a little bit stronger, uh, especially if I have a lot of troops. I have a lot of tier 11 troops in my castle still. So I want to start working on the tier 11s, um, not quite as much as my tier 12s, but I want to work on them so that they're stronger. Um, and it matters, like every little upgrade matters. And we'll cover some math on that in a second. Now, up on the screen is a chart. And it shows the initial cost of every upgrade I set at zero. Like, I know each one has a cost. But the initial upgrade every day, I'm going to put it at the value zero. And then the first upgrade that you do past the initial so I, I guess technically your second upgrade, third upgrade, fourth, etc. So your second upgrade is going to be one additional badge. Your third upgrade, two additional badges. Fourth upgrade, three additional badges. Fifth upgrade, four additional badges. And at the very bottom, look at the total additional badges that it costs you for each upgrade. So by the time you've done your fifth upgrade, you've wasted 10 badges. Um, because it was, you know, an extra one and then an extra two and then an extra three and extra four. So you have to add those all up and your total extra badges is 10. So by the time you get to seven upgrades in one category, you've wasted 28 badges by not being patient. Now there's going to be plenty of times where you have extra badges and you can push a little bit farther, um, and do a few more upgrades each day, but you don't want to just go crazy and burn through a bunch of badges, and then the next day, you know, you don't want to do 10 upgrades on one day, 
just so that you can be out of badges and only do two the next day. You got to find a balance. So if that was the scenario, you might want to do five upgrades one day, five the next day, five the day after that. Then you end up with more upgrades total for the same amount of badges. Okay. And, you know, it's going to take some fine tuning and sometimes you're going to have a lot of badges and you're going to want to do some crazy upgrades and you're going to do some rage upgrades or some emotional upgrades. It happens to everybody. Uh, you're going to lose a fight. You're going to get mad. And you're going to go burn all your badges to try and get a little bit stronger. Well, it happens, you know, um, just try and be patient. The other thing we don't know, what if they start putting, you know, use 10 troop badges in the 50% event, use 20 troop badges, use 30, use 40. And they start putting that in the 50% events or in the pirate events, things like that. It's, you know, it might not happen, but what if it does? Then there will be times where you're going to burn extra badges to gain rewards. Um, Cause that's a big chunk about playing this game cheaper is waiting for event rewards or quests to give you additional rewards for things that you already need anyways. You need to upgrade your gear, but most people wait until the 50% event or the pirate event or a quest that gives them resources, you know, something that they need, and then they upgrade. They'll upgrade three or four times at once. Okay, so... Let's look at an ability. Why does it matter? Why does this matter so much? Well, I should have shown you the base stat before I upgraded. Um, but basically, before I upgraded this, uh, it was at 385 for the defense of my tier 10 infantry. So... Why does that matter? Well, let's do some math. Um, basically, I'm, I'm getting this set up. Um, 385 point five eight times 20, one, two, three. Okay, so here's some math. We're gonna do some, some basic math on this, but this is kind of how it works. So your base stats of your troops, even though I didn't upgrade and it went from 385 to 385.58, it's a tiny little percentage. Shouldn't make that much of a difference, right? But that's wrong. It makes a huge difference. And the reason for that is, say I had 10,000 infantry defense. And I have 10,000 troop defense. So that's a total of 20,000 troop or total defense for my tier 10 infantry. Well, at the base stat of 385, if I multiply that all out, it's 7,700,000 defense that this troop has. Well, that one upgrade that I just did takes it to 385.58. So now when I multiply that out by 20,000, I get 7,711,600. So it was a gain to my tier 10 infantry's defense of 11,600 points. And, you know, without going into the entire formula, that's pretty significant, especially if um, when you take into account war books and the enemy stats and all of these other factors and damage and how it all multiplies out and changes and, you know, basically 11,600 is a lot. Um, it's pretty significant. And the other thing that makes these troop stats, these troop skills so important is that no matter how big the stats get in a year from now, and everybody's got 70,000 stats. Well, the base stats from troop skills are getting multiplied by that, and that doesn't go away. So continue increasing your troop skills is going to make you significantly stronger, uh, especially than newer kingdoms um, or kingdoms that you know don't have this yet. It's going to make it 
it's going to give older kingdoms a huge advantage. Uh, and players who do this smartly um, to maximize their benefits are going to, you know, you won't be too far behind the spenders um, because it's an exponential increase. So they have to spend a, a huge amount of money to get a little bit ahead. It's not like stats where, you know, they can buy the brand new thing. Like they could spend tons and tons of money on badges, but the system is designed to, I guess, increase the amount of money they have to spend. Like if they want to max out sooner, they're going to have to spend so much more than us, like way more than they have to on stats. So this is, uh, it's going to be a game of long-term goals and, it's a marathon, um, you know, it's not a sprint, so keep that in mind. Okay, what else do I want to cover? Um, since I need to, to look at this from first-time viewer's perspective, let's go through some of the abilities. Um, most of these, uh, for example, infantry increases your defense and your health, so it's making them tankier, their attack not doing much for their attack, nothing. The other thing that's kind of significant and um, fun is, see this one here, Wall of Shields? It decreases the um, advantage that distance has against you. So there's the triangle and the natural advantages and disadvantages. This decreases that. So this is pretty important. Um, and it's only a little bit, right? It's 0.1. But point one makes a big difference. Um, and I think the natural advantage is, I don't know if it's 15%, 20% or 25%. I don't, I don't know what the natural advantage is. But if you keep chipping away at that, it'll make it so that the triangle doesn't matter that much. If you've got this maxed out, well, then distance doesn't dominate your infantry anymore. Distance might do half as much. And then, you know... They'd really have to have a significant amount of stats over you um, to then try and maximize their march to, to counter yours. Uh, the other thing that's kind of important here is the bottom ability on every single troop skill is a special ability. So see this one, Battle Cry? It upsets the enemy horses, and there's a 0.15% chance that the enemy cavalry will be unable to attack for two seconds. So... You know, if that triggers, then you're doing damage to them for two seconds while they can do absolutely nothing. And if they sent a full cavalry march, all cavalry, two seconds is really going to make a big difference. It's going to cripple them. So there's that one. Uh, tier 11 infantry will go over the bottom, um, the bottom ability on all of these. The rest of them are just stats. But the bottom ability for this one... Hold your shields firmly, ignoring 0.15% of the damage dealt by enemy distance. So your tier 11 troops are taking less damage from enemy distance. If you combine that with the wall of shields, your tier 11 will reduce the natural advantage and be taking less damage. And you can bulk, the, bulk them up so they have even more defense. So, you know, <laughs> these abilities are nice. These troop skills are awesome. Uh, finally, let's do the tier 12, um, the tier 12 infantry. So this one, frighten the enemies, decreasing the basic attack of enemy distance by 0.115% for three seconds. So again, you're decreasing their basic attack. So if they haven't buffed up their attack or say you've got your Intimidation at level 10 and they've only got a level 5 attack, well, you're reducing their base stats by, you know, a higher margin than they've increased them. And it's going to make a huge difference on defense. Okay, let's go into the distance. We're going to do the tier, the bottom skill for distance. So the tier 10, stab. Plunge bayonets into the enemy horses, decreasing enemy cavalry attack by 15 point by 0.15%. This one doesn't have a limit. So if this happens at the very start of the fight, um, or if it's just a flat stat, it doesn't even say that it has a chance. It just, 
decreases the enemy attack. So this straight up reduces enemy cavalry attack, which is fantastic. Tier 11 distance. Um, study the tactics of enemy distance troops to decrease the damage dealt by enemy distance. So your tier 10, cal or tier 10 distance decreases cavalry attack. Your tier 11 distance decreases the enemy distance um, the damage dealt. So actually, so this is more significant here. When you look at something that decreases their attack versus something that de decreases the damage dealt, damage is one of the most important skills or more, most important stats in the game. A little bit of damage makes a huge, huge swing um, or difference in the fight. So this one is really good because it's decreasing damage, which is way more than decreasing attack, distance, or you know, or health or defense. Like decreasing the damage is huge. So that's a very important ability. Uh, tier 12 distance. Um, they decrease the enemy cavalry health by 0.15%. So you notice a kind of a theme here is that the bottom ability from all of these debuffs the enemy. Now, that brings in some interesting strategy tactics, and I haven't quite worked those out. Some other people have started, and I hope someone makes a chart. But there's potential for some mixed marches to do some huge, ridiculous damage to you know certain types of marches. Um, we'll go over that in just a second. So let me cover the last. Let me cover the cavalry um, bottom skill abilities, and then we'll talk about some of the potential crazy mixed march strategies that might happen. Um, and just you know, <laughs> it's there's lots of potential here. All right. So the bottom ability for the tier ten cavalry is um, you move fast which gives you a 0.15% chance to dodge the attack from enemy distance. So dodge is amazing. I love dodge as a skill. Um, you can have huge swings in battle because of dodge. And I just, dodge will completely ignore damage, incoming damage. So if you dodge, and it's a small chance right here, but it'll get bigger, but say on the first round of combat when there's the most troops versus the most troops if your troops dodge you're gonna win that fight or you're gonna do way better than you would have if you didn't dodge um it's it's such a huge stat so tier 11 cavalry um you have a 0.15 percent percent chance of parrying the enemy cavalry um and making them unable to attack for three seconds so Again, if that happens on the first turn and they're unable to attack for three seconds, that's all of your troops attacking them for three seconds while they do nothing, which is great. And then last, the Tier 12 Cavalry, Stampede. This one's great. So I unlocked this ability first because at level zero, it was a, you know, nothing. And look at this. So it jumped. Level one is a went from 1 to 1.4% 1 chance, and then level 2 is only 1.41%. So unlocking this to get it to level 1 was the most important thing, and I probably won't spend much time on it for a little while until after I've done some other stuff, because the extra 0 0.01 is less important than the initial 40% jump. But here there's a chance to deal 1.4 times damage to the enemy distance, which is great. Um, now I've gone over all that stuff. There's a lot to it. You should just keep working on this, spread it out. Um, focus on the troops you use in your marches. If you're more offensive, uh, the other thing is if you are just in someone else's mega garrisons or mega rallies, um, the mega rally or mega garrison leaders, troop skills transfer to everybody. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you're just a support and you never go out on your own and you're just there for the team fights, maybe skills don't really matter to you because the mega rally leader and the mega garrison leader, they got you covered, all right? 
So let's talk some crazy speculation. I don't know if any of this works, but on paper, it looks great. So looking at some of these abilities, um, tier 10 infantry, they hurt cavalry, right? So tier 10 infantry hurts cavalry. And then I think the next one that hurt cavalry was, let me see here. That's distance, tier 10 distance, debuffs cavalry. Tier, let's see, that one's distance, tier 12 distance, hurts cavalry. And I think it was tier 11 cavalry hurts other cavalry. So that's four, so, I mean, looking at this, so, you could put tier 10 infantry, tier 10 distance, tier 12 distance, and tier 11 cavalry in a march, and all four of those debuff the enemy's cavalry. So maybe not on offense, but look at this on defense. If they attack you with a march that's 100% cavalry, and you've got a lot of tier 10 infantry, tier 10 distance, tier 12 distance, and tier 11 cavalry in your castle there's a huge potential for their cavalry to get debuffed down to the point where they don't do much. So these troop skills, from my point of view, are going to make defense way more significant. It's going to be harder to attack into a castle of somebody that has increased all of their abilities and they have a bunch of troops because your attacking force is just going to get debuffed down uh, and get wrecked. So... I mean, you can only send so much on an attack, whereas they might have all of their abilities leveled up, and they've got, you know, nine chances to debuff your march, and you only have, you know, two or three chances to debuff theirs in return. Um, there's just a lot to it, a lot of possible strategy, a lot of just, you know, I'm excited to see where this goes, but there is a lot to it. Um so, I mean, I think that's it for this video as far as the things I wanted to showcase and talk about, um, the math on the badges, um, the quick math on the troops. Uh, I, I know that that was a, a simplistic um, formula for how complex the math is for battle, but it gets the point across that every troop skill upgrade matters because your base stats are modified by troop stats, and stats just keep increasing. So troop skills, very important. Don't neglect it. Uh, and try and do some upgrades every single day so that you're not wasting badges. Even if you're doing one or two on each type every single day, it's going to save you badges long term. All right. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I'll see you in the next video.